on the line at the finish. 190 points for second. I'm not sure if they realize how quick and fast some of the riders in this pack are because if you don't have a sprint, it is time to attack. It is time to go up the road. Valenti right now in the back, 23 and 26. Those two riders from Shore Air 2020 talking to each other. LA Sweat, I had mentioned three riders in this group. Pizzullo, the rider they're gonna be working for, Tiffany Pizzullo in the blue jersey right now sitting in second from Colavita Bianchi riding on the front, patrolling things, not letting things get too out of hand or not letting anybody go up the road. That's Jessica Mundy. Three laps to go. Now we see some attacks starting. Another preem with a bell with $50 on the line. Well, Dragu seems very much marked, and uh, no surprise there, as strong as she is. She won this race two years ago, 2015 champion here at the Boise Twilight Criterium. Looking to be able to take another win in 2017, riding on the front. But if it comes down to it, Valenti, Jennifer Valenti, with that track background, definitely is going to be a factor and someone that they're going to have to worry about and think about. Valenti's right now sitting almost dead last in this small pack. This is all that's left in the race. Everybody else has been pulled. This group of riders, it took uh, about 45 minutes for them to be able to get away. They separated themselves, and then once uh, the, big, the, big, the big teams, the big-named riders were all up in the front, the main pack pretty much sat up, and so they were about to get p lapped. They, rain, they rang the bell for that main pack, let them finish early, and pulled them off the course. So right now we have about 12 riders just riding around trying to figure out how to be able to win this bike race. Two laps to go. She loves picking up that $50. Got to give a lot of credit. She has tested out her sprint. Emily Newsom will know exactly what gear to sprint in. And that's the kind of one of those key things is that when you're uh, doing the sprint for those preems, you're able to kind of test yourself and kind of figure out what kind of gearing works, what kind of uh, how fast you can take that last corner. Newsom has uh, tested out all of those theories. A 34-year-old out of Texas right now on the front. Here's a nice counter move right now from L.A. Sweat being marked immediately by Ricetto from Hoggins Berman Superman and it looks like show air 2020 on the back might be Dragu again no it's Valenti right now I believe that's Valenti moving into second place on the rider from LA sweat we've only seen one crash in the race so far hopefully we don't see any more crashes I believe gonna keep my ear out I think this is gonna be one lap to go This is the bell lap for glory as a one a lap to go right now. Show air 2020 on the attack. Oh, look at Valenti getting onto the back of that train as Dragu is pushing the pace. Dragu coming through. This is either going to be a super long lead out, which could work out perfectly for Clevenger. Erica Clevenger from Visit Dallas DNA, Collegiate National Road Champion, second in the time trial. Sitting per Pizzullo right now, one, two, three, four, he's in fifth. She's moving up on the inside in the blue jersey. Pizzullo is now making her move. Getting pushed to the side from Valenti. Coming around, I believe that is going to be Valenti right now from Show Air 2020. That is Valenti, Show Air 2020 ride biker. Pizzullo following on the wheel. Look at how low, look at the gap that has opened up and the power coming from Valenti right now. That is a long ways out, sprinting before the fourth corner and now all the way to the line. Head to head on the front. Show air, 2020 ride biker. It is going to be Jennifer Valenti taking the win. Pizzullo unofficially in second. And it might be, I think, uh, Ricetto in third. 
but what a ride. So unofficially, Jennifer Valenti taking the win. Tiffany Pizzullo in second. Starla Tettergreen from Hoggins Berman Superman in third. Erica Clevenger in fourth. And Liza Ricchetto in fifth. And you can see there was no challenge to the replay of watching Valenti come across the line. 2016 Olympic silver medalist in Rio taking the win here at the Boise Twilight Criterion, marking her name in the history books for the 2017 champion. What a race. Unbelievable that the pack completely pretty much split in half and the rest of the field not able to finish because all of the big names and the big teams were up in the front. Nobody was willing to chase and pretty much before you knew it, that was the end of it. Our top 10 will start in 10th. Ali Dragu in 10th place. Emily Newsom in 9th. Jessica Mundy in eighth, Brenna Rice Simpson seventh, Stefan Rorta in sixth, Lisa Ricchetto in fifth, Clevenger in fourth, Teta Green in third, Pizzullo in second, which definitely will confirm her overall USA Crit Series. And Jennifer Valenti taking the win. So the JL Velo orange leaders jersey now changes hands from Peter Mullins onto Tiffany Pizzullo. Riders right now cooling off, uh, riding. Got to give a lot of credit to Emily Newsom. Attacking like mad, picking up a ton of preems. So it's putting in a, a very good ride. You can see that beautiful shot of uh, the Capitol right here in downtown Boise, Idaho. And you can see a little bit of the lawn area of our Capitol Park, which is actually where the Twilight Fan Expo is taking place. So up next, our 90-minute race. In about 15 minutes will be the start of our men's race. They'll be racing for 90 minutes. They're scheduled for an 8.15 local time start. And as a reminder, a little bit different what we're doing this year with our camera crew all out at Boise in downtown, filming the race, bringing you the race numbers, bringing you the action. And my director and myself are sitting in Atlanta, Georgia in the production truck as we're calling the race for you. So this reduces the cost of being able to bring live web stream to you to be able to watch it on the internet. It also allows many other races perhaps to be able to find this affordable so that we can watch more races on the internet. Intelligentsia Cup is taking place. Cascade is coming up. We have the Boise Twilight Criterion. We have all these other criteriums. Everybody loves to be able to watch the races and see what's happening. Plus, it gives a lot of exposure for all of the sponsors that are on these riders' backs, the sponsors that are part of the race. And a great opportunity for the riders to be able to kind of uh, show off their name brand and their name uh, to everybody in the entire world. Because we have, ride we have uh, spectators or people watching from all over the world. It's not just the riders in, or for the spectators in the U.S. Big thank you to the Downtown Boise Association and Georgia's Cycle and Fitness as our proud host. As we go down for a rider interview from John Beckman. but it might feel pretty good to win out here in Boise too. Yeah, you know, our whole team is here in um, Idaho supporting the veterans with Mission 43 program. And so winning for them here as a team is really special. Well, speaking of team too, on the track, on the course tonight, Show Air 2020 had several riders. You ended up with three in that lead group. And I saw you talking with, I think, Steph Ruda with a few laps to go. You were at the back kind of huddling up. What were you saying? Yeah, you know, it's always important to really communicate with your team, certainly when we're off the front in a little bit of a smaller group like that. Just making sure that everybody with my team is on the same page and knows what's happening and what the plan is for the end of the race. Now, what was the plan? Were you the designated sprinter, or was it like depending on this or that, who's going who's gonna to win this race? Yeah, I think you all, every, every team has a couple options in play, and, and based on what everybody sees and what's happening in the race, you can adjust for that. 
All right, now the name of your team is 2020, so you're all aiming for the 2020 Olympics. And, uh, you know, everybody on your team has a pretty good chance of making it, but it's kind of a pressure cooker out there, I think. Yeah, more so with the name 2020, um, like with Olympic development, we're one of the only teams that have a junior program. And I was actually one of the riders that came through that junior program and kind of building young riders into adults and into professional riders. Well, at the age of 17, as I recall, you were uh, perhaps a junior world champion or maybe an elite world championships placer. Yeah, I won the junior world scratch race in 2011. Um, and shortly after that, I was fourth at the elite worlds in the scratch race. So, kind of a little criterium. <laughs> well, you've, you've had a great career so far. You're still young. You have a long ways to go, and we wish you the best of success in uh, chasing your Olympic goals. Thank you very much. Jennifer Valente. Just heard, there we just heard from Jennifer Valente, as she has mentioned, a 12-time junior track national champion. Very talented on the track with the team pursuit and 2016 Olympic silver medalist and a two-time elite world champion taking the win here at the Anderson Schwartzman Woodard and Brailsford Boise Twilight Criterium. Lots of mountain biking around uh, the Boise area. We talked about 190 miles of trails in the Ridge to Rivers trail system. It's also wine country, Idaho wine country in and around Boise is growing in very popular wine industry. There's more, to, there, you know, there's more than 30 wineries all within a short driving distance from downtown Boise. So a lot of them have their own tasting rooms, several ciders and even 16 local craft brew pubs all in the area. Beautiful area to be able to be able to go out and ride 25 miles of the Greenbelt Pass along the Boise River that cuts right through the heart of downtown Boise. But these riders are going to be riding in a rectangle. Four corners, very straight up, a little bit over a kilometer course. Last year we talked about uh, the problems that we had, the crashes in turn number one. But otherwise, it's a pretty wide course. Very standard criterion, not very technical. And if we look back at... Our previous winners last year, Ty Magner winning in a group sprint. The breakaway had gotten away, but then the chase came down at the very end as United Healthcare brought it all back, and Ty Magner taking the win. Ulysses Castillo was very aggressive in this race. Uh, I think actually his ride that he did in this race was part of the reason that he was then picked up by Jelly Belly because he was attacking and getting in all of the breaks, and Ulysses Castillo just never stopped the entire day, and he still managed so to be able to have the legs to be able to sprint at the end, finishing second to Ty Magner. Luke Keo, third on the day, which was, he was Ty Magner's uh, lead out guy, but still managed to cross the line in third. And that was in 2016. In 2015, Daniel Holloway was the winner here with Ken Hansen. And 2014, Ken Hansen actually took the win with Keo finishing in second. And then if we go back to 2013, we get into the Hilton Clark area with Ricardo Escuela and Jonathan Clark in 2012. 31 years of the Boise Twilight Criterium. Beautiful shot right there of what I've been talking about, which is the Capitol Park, the Twilight Fan Expo, with all of the food vendors and local community vendors selling different things. You find out a lot of information about the local cycling groups. Uh, obviously get some adult beverages or some kid beverages. Uh, a bunch of awesome booths and information all right there in Capitol Park, right across from the Capitol, which is right on the left-hand side, which we're racing back and forth on Jackson Street. 90 minutes of racing, getting ready to come up with our pro men, and we have a, a pretty good field here as our men right now are warming up on the race course or perhaps lining up, getting ready to be able to start our call-ups in just a few minutes. Pulling up our list here, we have almost 65 riders on our start line in our pro men.
earlier in the day, we heard from Mayor David Beter. Spoke briefly to the crowd about how great cycling is in this community. Looking to be able to expand it and have more. And in downtown Boise, they have what's called the Basque Block. A large popular folks with Basque heritage. And Maj Mayor David Beiter is from the Basque community in Boise. So right now, they're introducing us Greg Henderson on the front. And that's with Reagan Cornwall, age six and a half. Her dad, Craig, a Navy veteran, is competing in the hand cycling race. But Reagan was the recipient of United Healthcare Children's grant to help pay for a hearing aid. The UHC grant covers what insurance couldn't or didn't. Every year, the United Healthcare Pro Cycling Team honors a children's grant recipient with their honorary pro for a day. And Reagan Cornwell is our pro for a day here at the Boise Twilight Criterium. Reagan's mom, a little bit later, is going to be able to go into the... Uh, the lead pace car and drive around for two or three laps and be able to enjoy that. And the team presented Reagan a brand new bike and helmet, a team jersey and other gifts. So Reagan has got to be on cloud nine with a brand new bike and helmet as Greg Henderson right there. All smiles just watching little Reagan ride around as we get ready for our call ups. As we get ready to start things off here with our ASWB Twilight Criterion, but as mentioned, it's the 31st year of this race. The rider from United Healthcare fixing his brakes. Oh, they just called up Greg Henderson. So he's been five years. He spent racing on Belgian teams in Europe, and now has come over to United Healthcare. He's won a stage at the Vuelta España and a stage in Pyrenees. He's the rider in the blue jersey from United Healthcare. Racing for Palmetto State, that was Ben Rinkema, the current amateur national champion in the black jersey right there. Ben Rinkema with a big win just a few weeks ago, also first at the Whiskey City. The previous professional Criterium national champion, he won it in 2016. Coming off a big stage win at the North Star Grand Prix, that's Brad Huff. Racing for Team Rally. I believe this is Kevin Mullervy. Yes, Kevin Mullervy racing for Team Cliff Bar. That is the team that started the slogan, United States of Criterium Racing. And I just saw a banner somewhere saying United States of Cyclocross Racing or something. It was a total ripoff of what Team Cliff Bar had started. I got to remember where I saw that. But Mullerby recently first at the Discovery Criterium, also the previous winner of the Athens Twilight Criterium. Tad Hamilton racing for Mercedes-Benz. Look at that big emblem on his chest. Two-time Idaho State champion from Boise, Idaho, a local favorite. There's a lot of local favorites from here. Bill Short, another local favorite. Bill Short, 44 years old, he's out of Boise, does cyclocross, mountain biking, road racing, pretty much everything that you can think of racing for the Matrix Cycling Club. Chaz Hoganar was a 19-year-old from Mercedes-Benz. I'm not sure if I see him up there, Chaz Hoganar, the 19-year-old. But Pete Morris, the nickname is Tor, Racing also for Team Cliff Bar. You can see that long hair, and he does have a little bit of resemblance of Tor. All he needs is a big hammer. Can't race a bicycle when you're carrying that big hammer. So Tor is just going to have to let his legs do the, do the power, do the power lifting. So Ben Rinkema, one, two, third rider from the left-hand side. Brand new current amateur national champion. I'm Frankie Andreu as we're bringing you the ASWB Boise Twilight Criterium. 31st annual Race, again, this is the fourth race in our USA Crit Series. First race in Athens, Georgia. The Twilight Criterium was won by John Murphy, who was leading out his teammate Ty Magner. Both of those riders on Hollow Esca Citadel. Murphy taking the win. Then at Winston-Salem, Magner was able to take the win. And in front of... In Lawrenceburg, 
Ben Rankema taking the win. So Rankema has actually moved up into third in those overall rankings. Ty Magner currently is the current winner of our USA Crits Racer, the current leader of our USA Crits Racer. So he's wearing the orange. Well, I don't know if he is. I'll have to find him in this group. Should be wearing the orange JL Velo Leaders jersey, Ty Magner. Ben Rankema is in second in our USA Crits Race Series. And Frank Trevacio in third. David Gutenplan in fourth. Wayne Woodard, our starter for the race, getting ready to be able to get things underway. He's a partner with the law firm of Anderson, Schwartzman, Woodard, and Brailsford. So Wade Woodward, a big reason why they're able to have this race year after year is because of the great partners like ASWB. So riders are off and running. Our fourth race in the USA Crit Series well underway right now as we go into turn at number one. And Tor on the outside from Cliff Bar, making his way through that race first. Or making that way through that corner first. <laughs> 90 minutes of racing, riders are gonna kinda feel their way through this. It looks like right away, it looks like an attack. Team Cliff Bar right now on the attack immediately going up the road. Six riders, John Bergman, Paul Morris, which we had talked about, Zach Allison, Michael Jacques, Connor Mullervy, and Kevin Mullervy, the twins, all are on Team Cliff Bar. Well, if they start ringing the bell the way they did in the women's, this guy's gonna be a rich guy if he can stay off the front. Michael Jacques from Team Cliff Bar right now. Only 65 riders in the field taking the start right now is Jacques from Team Cliff Bar is off the front. Way back in April, he was third at the Red Kite Criterium. Trying to be able to take a first place here at the Boise Twilight Criterium. He was, uh, didn't finish the race. Caught up actually in the crashes that took place uh, last year, so making try, or trying to make up for not being able to finish last year as he caught up in that crash and trying to make a difference sometimes that's the safest place if you're off the front by yourself you can pick up the premiums you pick up the money you're not involved in all the mayhem going on behind you so we talked about some of the powerful teams that are here we could talk about united healthcare with luke keogh greg henderson dan eaton carlos alzate Adrian Hegever and Tanner Putt. Silence Pro Cycling with a, a full squad. Rally with, I think, only three riders here, but it's Curtis White, Brad Huff, Perrick Noll. Gateway Harley Davidson with Dennis Ramirez and George Simpson and Brian Gomez. And so these guys, uh, a lot of good riders here that. They know how to balance not letting things get too far out in front of them and balancing uh, being able to ride the criterium to be able to have some legs at the finish of the race. So United Healthcare was a very strong squad, and again, they won last year. The, the guy that won that race for them, Ty Magner, has switched teams. He's racing for Holowesca Citadel. Six riders now separating themselves. That's what could be dangerous. Is if six riders kind of get up the road, and these guys all in the pack spread out across the road. If they once they get about 30 seconds, uh, very very difficult to be able to bring back a large group like that with that much horsepower. At the same time, look at them, all the front guys are all coasting. Everybody's coasting in that front group. We're only two laps into the race. As a reminder, five laps into the race, we do have our first USA Crit point sprint. That's going to be 10, 7, 5, 3, and 2. That's five places deep.
Serpentine, Serpentine as these riders are spread out. Essing all across the road, coming around to the corner, then following all the way to one side of the road, trying to stay in line and stay in that draft. So USA crit points on the winner of this lap when they come around to that start finish line. Points up for grab. Big attack up the left hand side. It's being followed immediately. Might be a couple riders, Palmetto State marking that move in the black and blue jerseys. United Healthcare now on the front starting to mark that move also, not wanting any uh, a break to be able to go up the road without them. That, then that would kind of force them to have to chase and use up some energy later on or early on in the race that they don't want to have to be able to use. Could be Gage Hecht, maybe the uh, Volo rider sitting in third. That is, that's Gage Hecht in third from a Volo cycling. Another premium coming up for the riders. Gage Hecht coming off a under 23 national second place. So close to a national championship, but a great ride as he now looks over his shoulder. A ton of strength right now as he's going up the road. Won the criterium at Redlands too, so he's no stranger to road races or criteriums. Avolo, a brand new development team. Directed by Michael Creed on uh, the Allied Bicycles, a brand new bicycle company started, I believe, out of Tennessee. Pretty much started this year. Starting to get a little bit strung out, not single file. I mean, there's definitely riders in there coasting or sitting comfortably. Pete Morris sitting second there in that red jersey. Now it looks like he's out of the saddle as Morris now is trying to bridge up, bridge that gap and try to shut things down. Gage Hack taking that, that $100 premium right now and continuing to drive on the front. So our first USA Chris points, that was actually taken by Corey Davis from Palmetto State. Second place, Ben Rinkema from Palmetto State. Again, I talked about Ben Rinkema being in second place. Rinkema has uh, 412 points. Magner has 512 points. That's so about a 100 point difference, 200 points are available at the end. Uh, Gage Hecht was in third, Daniel Eaton in fourth, and Michael Engel in fifth. And that wraps up our top five for that five lap in USA Crit Point Sprint. Well, nice start for Avolo having these riders going up the road. I think that is Ben Renkema in, 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 uh, in the black and uh, blue sitting right there behind him in second. Team Cliff Bar just kind of uh, keeping the momentum going, uh, not too worried about how this is gonna play out right now. Oh, nice, we have a rider in the pit. Not nice, but we have a rider in the pit. Nice that we're able to see that, be able to see what happens and how you get thrown back in. That's Bill Short. That's the local rider out of Boise, Idaho. Pretty much an all-arounder, meaning cross, mountain bike, road racing. The guy just, he rides his bike. So waiting to get confirmation of those numbers of uh, first and second. You see the riders in the green and black. Those are some riders from Silence with Orlando Garibay. Carl Minzies is here. Hunter Grove, Scott Law and Brian Lewis. Now United Healthcare making a move with the rest of the riders in chase mode. When you can bring together one of the biggest leading healthcare companies, form a foundation and entire your activities in with an event like this makes it a lot of fun and of course extremely So your current amateur national champion, Ben Rankema, on the front right now. Talked about having those ro that road race strength. Well, Gage Hecht, under 23 national championships, was second. 
Georgia State road champion is Ben Rinkema. That's two, two results on their resumes from road races. Also, Rinkema having a, uh, just taking the win also at Whiskey City, which was uh, race number three of the USA Crit Series. This is race number four. This is the 12th race in USA Cycling's Pro Road Tour, also part of the USA Crit Series. And our next race after this one will be going to Westchester, Pennsylvania on August 12th. Five seconds is the time gap off the group right now as Gage Hack, look at that, in that aerodynamic position. But United Healthcare now on the front, but nobody is following the rest of the field not coming up to that move by United Healthcare. So now start, things starting to split. Brad Huff on the front right now. He's not gonna let this go away. Love to have a little bit of help from the other riders in the Peloton. Gateway Harley Davidson making a move to be able to get up there. It looks like it might be, I'm gonna think it might be uh, Gomez. Six riders. Now in the front group, Team Cliff Bar, I think with nobody in that front group, you can spot those red jerseys. United States of Criterium Racing, great slogan. They are on the front, that's Tor on the front, that's Pete Morris right now trying to bring it back. A lot of these other riders are gonna be able to sit in and stay rested, not being able to do anything. Good, strong rider for a little bit later on in this race we're gonna have to watch out for. Is the rider from Rally Cycling, that's Curtis White. Adrian Hegeveri right now on the front from United Healthcare bringing everything back together. Got some riders from the 303 project. They're a team out of uh, Colorado. Local team out of Boise, Idaho, the Mercedes Benz team. Palmetto State Medical is the team that Ben Rankema, that amateur national champion, is on. Primal Audi Denver out of Boulder, Colorado. It's like John Noonan. They're taking their points as they go. Let's put some cash in their pockets. That just goes to show you the prestige of this race. The riders from Iowa, Colorado, Pennsylvania, Vermont, Wisconsin, Minnesota, all over, all coming out to be able to participate here in the Boise Twilight Criterium. Gonna get a little bit darker. It's gonna change things a little bit for these riders. They have to deal with the shadows and the lights and uh, kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. Orlando Garibay coming through from Silence on the front and it looks like it's... Hegeberg is Hecht is still on the front. No, it's Michael Hernandez of Olo Cycling. Hernandez is a rider with a very good sprint and someone to be able to watch out for also. Fifth at Criterium National Championship, so that was recently won, I'd say a little bit in a surprising manner by Travis McCabe. So it's Travis McCabe, Eric Young. Ty Magner, and as I had just mentioned, M Michael Hernandez was fifth in that kind of sprint, but McCabe, definitely a, 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 sprint, a sprinter from United Healthcare, but generally I think a road race sprinter. I mean, the harder the race goes and the hillier it is to a point, he doesn't lose his speed. He's extremely fast. So to be able on a criterium circuit, to be able to beat some of the fastest riders in the nation, Travis McCabe had some great form and some great speed, some great bike handling to put him into that position to be able to become professional criterium national champion right in front of Young and Ty Magner. Eric Young coming off a win from Rally, he's from Rally Cycling, coming off a win from the Gastown uh, Grand Prix recently. That was just a couple days ago. And again, there's three riders from Rally that are here. And a lot of these riders, as I had mentioned, after Boise are traveling on to the Cascade Cycling Classic. Great road race. Bend, Oregon, where mix of road races, crit time trial, kind of get have to be able to do everything uh, pretty well. Uh, the Cascade Cycling Classic coming up in 
of uh, less than a week. And that really lures a lot of the riders to be able to come out here and participate in the Boise Twilight Criterium on their way over to be able to get ready for that cascade. Saw Curtis White a little bit earlier in there. We just see going by right there on the back and uh, not too worried, uh, Michael Engel. Actually, Michael Engel right now is on the fourth in the orange jersey on the left-hand side. Michael Engel is kind of patrolling things for Gateway Harley-Davidson. United Healthcare and Gateway Harley-Davidson immediately responding to it. I love how you see certain teams and certain riders, like if United Healthcare goes, a Gateway Harley-Davidson is going. Team Rally only has three riders in here. They're sitting back a little bit. They're going to let this play out a little bit and try to make a move a little bit later on once the fatigue sets in. But right now, Avolo not waiting around for anybody as we saw Gage Heck attacking early on. Then we saw Michael Hernandez going up the road. And now we have another rider from Avolo deciding to be able to take his chance of going up the road. They don't even have that many riders in this. So that is, that's Gage Hecht again, excuse me. So Avola with three riders in here. So I gotta wait for Lance Hate it to see what he's gonna do. If he's gonna be able to take a turn in attacking. That is some road form. That is when you're riding a criterium and the attacks happen and you don't even feel it because you have such good form. And that's exactly what's going on. The 19 year old trying to rip up and beat up on some of the top professionals in the nation right now is Hecht from Avolo Cycling going up the road. United Healthcare responding to that move. With our three time winner, Matt Buxton, Buxton. I think that might have been Daniel Eaton in chase mode right there. Two riders in the blue jersey from United Healthcare making that move a little bit of a split, but Gateway Harley Davidson immediately shutting it down. Silence Pro Cycling there. That was a beautiful shot. I think that was uh, William Cycling, Joshua Carling in the blue and white jersey. Silence Pro Cycling pulling off, not wanting anything to do with. Uh, Staying on the front and doing more work than he has to. That's Orlando Garibay again finding himself on the front. Excuse me, sir. Can you stay off the hand railings? You too, sir. Excuse me. Can you stay off the hand railings? Thank you. We're about 17 minutes into the race right now. Again, these riders are racing for 90 minutes. Not too far away, Boise State University, the home of the Broncos. 23,000 students from all over the world attend there. Of course, they're known for their famous, iconic blue turf. What's nice about Boise State, you know, it's an urban campus. It's right on the Boise River in about 10 minutes walking distance from where the Criterium Circuit is. So Pete Morris now taking a turn on the front from Team Cliff Barr. Last year, Team Cliff Barr, I don't wanna say it was a documentary, but a nice, really well done video project that they did on Criterium Racing traveling the country, going to different races, following Team Cliff Bar, kind of what it was like. It was a nice video project that they had put together with Team Cliff Bar, this video project that kind of highlighted what it was like for many of the young riders, old riders, anybody on the team, but, and, and going to a lot of the criteriums in the U.S. So really well done. And of course, I've mentioned a few times the, the shirts that they had made up, which said United States of Criterium Racing, which I thought was a, a very excellent slogan because Criterium racing is part of the U.S. cycling. And if you cannot Criterium race, you're going to have a hard time moving up the ranks, becoming a good bike rider, to learn a lot of skills in crit racing. And a lot of the stage races, almost I think almost every stage race in the U.S., except for the UCI ones, have a Criterium that is part of that stage race. And so have 
have to be able to fly around corners, have to be able to attack, have to be able to accelerate from 25 miles an hour to 35 miles an hour and uh, try to miss those, uh, you know, the rear wheels that are in front of you, not clip a pedal, pedaling around the, around the corners. Uh, a lot's involved in being able to excel at crit racing. And a lot of times the riders who are good crit racers, they actually can make a pretty darn good living uh, traveling around the U.S. doing a lot of the races as long as you're able to be able to have that acceleration, that sprint, and being able to win. It's a good way to get noticed and get picked up on bigger and better teams, which is exactly what's happening right now because the bell is ringing with $50 on the line. United Healthcare is thinking about trying to bring it back. A lot of coasting right now as they immediately brought him back. They didn't want to let him go up the road. That was Kai Applequist, Mercedes-Benz, presented by Thrivnet. So Applequist in the white jersey being joined by three other riders, $50 on the line, United Healthcare leading it through that corner. That is our third corner as they're making their way back towards the state capitol. Greg Henderson on the front right now. Now the sprint. So Applequist started the attack, and now he's doing the sprint, trying to get to the line first. Going to try to switch our camera angle, try to see what's going to happen in the sprint as Applequist is just passed at the line, losing out on $50. And that's going to go, I believe it's going back to Gage Hecht. So Hecht on a mission. He loves attacking and he loves to keep going. It's almost like counterattacking yourself. Probably got those kind of tactics and strategy from Creed. Creed was one who could counterattack himself and make it stick. Look at the back of the group. One long line. The speed really picking up and starting to string itself out. Rest of the riders bunched up. In the front part, flick of the elbow. Coming from Gateway Harley Davidson, I think that was uh, Brian Gomez. Two riders. That's probably about a three or four second gap, but now this is a more serious gap. This is moving up to six to 10 seconds to our main peloton. I didn't notice if Rally had a rider in the front group. That is gonna be something that's gonna determine if this group should be able to stay away or not. So Gage Heck was brought back and now we have, this is a Hernandez. So Hernandez and Gomez, I believe, right now going up the road. 54, 54. 54. I didn't see them all. We got six of them. We're going to see who our chasers are here in a little bit. And again, there's no rally. They only have three riders in the race, but Rally Cycling doesn't want to come all the way to Boise and not strike out and get anything, so they're going to have to wait to see. Silence Pro Cycling on the front, but I, th I think they had somebody in that front group. That would be definitely uh, somebody that the rest of the riders in this group could sit back, but Silence does have someone in that front group. Perhaps they are not pleased with that. I'm not sure if uh, United Healthcare is actually going to be super pleased with only having Greg Henderson in that group. Oh, excuse me, that's Hegeveri. So Adrian Hegeveri. Hernandez, a flick of the elbow. Hegeveri going through. Also in that group is uh, Hunter Grove from Silence. And it looked also like, uh, let me try to get that, Kevin Mullervy from Team Cliff Bar. The 
bell keeps ringing for preems and riders are going to keep taking that money as long as they can Hunter Grove recently just sitting on right now, so he knows this isn't good for him. Not having too much luck at uh, St. Francis Tulsa Tough. Recently struggling a little bit there, and so looking to be able to make a difference and sit on and try to allow his team to be able to do some chasing as uh, Hernandez is on the front. Hernandez is a good move for Hernandez, and for 45, I forgot about him. I didn't see him in that move earlier on. We're going to see... That is uh, 45 is uh, Trevor Jackson from Caliber SBR. Brian Gomez third at the road race at Joe Martin, but coming off a more important win was though he took first at Glencoe. So that was a big win, a big boost for his confidence coming off that win at Glencoe. And Gomez now looking to be able to try to take another big win. Now what's going to mess this up is if United Healthcare starts sitting on and Silent starts sitting on. If Hegeveri is not working and Hunter Grove is not working, then there's no way this is going to be able to stay away. So it's going to be very important to have a uh, contribution from these other riders to try to have this uh, stay away if they're going to have any chance of making it to the finish. Chase right now is coming from the back. That is being led by Chaz Hoganauer from... Colorado State University. Hogan Art, 19 years old from Boise. 19 years old and right now leading the chase to try to bring back racing for Mercedes Benz. So as a reminder, it's Michael Hernandez, Brian Gomez, Adrian Hegeveri on the back, Hunter Grove in the black and green and it looks like it's about to all come back together amazingly without any work from Rally, Rally Pro Cycling Playing it smart right now, sitting in. So that is the end for Mullervy, Gomez, Hegeveri, Jackson, Hernandez, and Grove. And that time gap only grew to about 15 seconds. Did never got any larger than that. As we are coming up, I believe, on 30 minutes into the race. Well, a break goes up the road, the uh, attack and the chase starts to happen. It looks like uh, it's Hunter Grove again on the front. Hegeveri remaining on the front. These are the remnants of that first break that they're gradually bringing back. Now we see Hayden, Lance Hayden from Avolo Cycling coming up to the front. That is a great thing about a team is having different riders participate at different points in the race. As a bell lap taking uh, some money right there on the right hand side of the road. And again, another sharing that responsibility, George Simpson coming to the front right now. And we had talked about that, like different riders having different responsibilities, sharing that workload makes a big difference, allows other riders to be able to take a breather and then be able to kind of get, find them, get themselves back into the race a little bit later on. Thank you. 
Senate Schwarzman Woodard Gross for making the Boise Twilight Criterium happen, making the best day in Boise happen. Simpson looks like he just got dropped right off the back of that or he just missed the counterattack. Oh, excuse me. He's back. He's been wrapped back up. But now we have a rider from Rally Cycling, I think, uh, making his way up. Coming up on 30 minutes of racing right now. Five riders being joined by another four riders making it a group of nine with another two for a group of 11. Another United Healthcare, yeah, United Healthcare is not gonna be happy with one rider in 11. So now two riders in 11, teeny bit better. The other teams are gonna have to be careful because when you have that big of a group, you look, you have Rally, you have Cliff Bar, you have uh, Silence, you have United Healthcare. Every big team is finding themselves. Two riders from Silent, from Rally, they only have three riders in the race. Avolo has three riders in the race, and they have one rider up there. Another rider from Silent starting to come up. So this group swells, becomes more dangerous. They're also going to start having more riders starting to sit on. Not a lot of riders are going to be continued uh, to be able to work together, as I believe that's Daniel Eaton now attacking. Gage Hecht has made it back up into that group again. Looks like it's uh, Curtis White from Rally Cycling along Michael Hernandez from Avolo. So that's two riders, I believe, from Avolo. I'm going to have to double check that. Oh, it looks like it's starting to come back now. It looks like a big attack. Yeah, too many riders sitting on, getting a little bit too complicated as one rider is coming through right now. All in black. Joshua Carling from Williams Cycling. But how much of a breather are these guys going to allow him to have? Joshua Carling obviously not feeling the effects of the speed. Carling joined up by a few other riders racing for Williams Cycling. Coming off just last week in a win at the Davis Bike Club. It actually has a bunch of wins here. If I look at uh, on this sheet here, one, two, three, four, five, he has probably five or six wins this year. That is a good, that is a good resume. Good set of results in the, in different races. Uh, granted. He definitely is, uh, does 36 years old. So some of them are in the Masters 35 plus. So 36 years old in the black jersey, Carling, trying to break up this group. Now look how it's strung out. This is a better with one line showing an indication of how fast this race is going as Carling's on the front. 36 years old right now, racing for Williams Cycling. White sitting in second place, just kind of holding his own, not in any rush to be able to go to the, actually not even passing him. And that is along with United Healthcare having the same kind of mentality there as uh, Carlos Alzate in no rush to be able to push this forward. Alzate a few years ago, hands down one of the best criterium riders in the U.S. He won everything. He went to a crit. Guy had a ton of speed, a ton of strength. He could make the break. He went from a bunch sprint. Alzate on a fire. But it's amazing on how riders come out of the woodwork and different riders come up. Um, riders could have been good back then, but it's just it's just changes. It, it, you know, for a while there, uh, Luke Keo was uh, completely on fire. Ty Ty Magner last year was unbeatable, um, and so we've seen different riders at different times during their career kind of have highs and lows. Justin Williams is another rider. He, he's not here. I don't know why he's not here, but very very fast rider. He's actually uh, who's out at BC Super Week. That's what he might still be out in Canada, racing at. Uh, all the races out there at BC Super Week and uh, Gastown Grand Prix and the other ones out there. So right there on the back we see, uh, Justin, oh no, Justin Williams is here, my bad. 
So Justin Williams is here. I just saw him on the back there from Silence Pro Cycle. So he just came from racing in Canada to Boise to be able to pick up some points. Very fast rider also. If it comes down to a group sprint, that is one guy that they are going to be able to look out for. Could really use another big win. Obviously, the more wins you can put onto that resume, the better as uh, Justin Williams is in here. He's got uh, a hit squad of riders that can help lead him out with uh, Orlando Garibay, Carl Menzies, one of the most experienced Criterium riders in the U.S., part of that United Healthcare hit squad from uh, many years. Hunter Grove and Scott Law and Brian Lewis, all part of Silence. So Williams cycling, it looks like they're changing it up right now. So it was last time, it was Joshua Carling. This is Robert Terra. Well, I don't know why they reacted immediately to Carling. They're not reacting immediately to Terra. Big difference, only 20 years old as Tara now is going up the road. I like this. Looking very comfortable, turning the legs over, waiting to see who's coming up. Tara now reabsorbed. I'm not sure if there was a preem or Or if they're just trying to string it out a little bit more. So Daniel Eaton again going up the road. He's kind of been patrolling the front, kind of following the riders to make sure that nobody gets away. $100 premium for the winner of the next lap. That's going to spark a little bit, a little interest. Gage hacked again on the front, looking over his shoulder, sensing and trying to see. He's almost looking over his shoulder, but continuing to ride hard. Not easing up to see who's coming up to him, but like testing. It's going to be close. Somebody wants to sprint off that wheel in that second group, they're definitely going to be able to come by Gage Hecht. A little bit over halfway, you got to determine how much effort you want to put into trying to win $100 and how much effort you're going to need trying to save something for that counterattack. Sprint's going up on the right hand side. Hecht's not giving up. <laughs> right, you got the front. Now in the slipstream, it's the perfect position as Hecht is responding. Look at the tiny gears that he uses, and I, it's going to be a throw of the bike. Is I'm not sure. I can't call that one. Very, very close. Rider from Williams cycling again. That was Joshua Carling in that black jersey. So Carling and Hecht now are away. Can they keep pedaling or are they going to coast? Look at the gap they got though, just from that one sprint. That is a big gap. Team. Here we go. They were 
They were just about banging heads together over that dream, and now they're up there. Big trying to work together. That's right. Where's the head? Get out there. You've got a contest, and then you work together to try to get away. Well, a good cross rider, not only on the road in the crits. One of those riders, those young riders that grow up, he's on this development team from Avola, but he grows up doing, grew up, excuse me, doing cross riding, doing road riding, doing crits, kind of becoming the all-arounder that he is. Still kind of discovering on what kind of rider he can become. So close, but yet so far. Carling and Heck continue to just kind of just kind of turn the legs, staying in a good state position. As of right now, we see some other riders responding. It's those preems, it's those bells that are, look at Brad Huff in second place. Well, they brought them back. Huff is uh, trying to set up for the sprint. Two new riders, they just came right by him. It looks like it's uh, Paul Morris coming through. We're about 40 minutes into the race, 90 minutes on tap today for our men. 65 riders started this race. I think there's 65 riders still in the race. Hasn't been hard enough for anybody to get dropped. Nobody, we haven't seen a crash yet. We saw one crash in the women's race. But right now, there's been it's been aggressive. There's been a lot of attacks. Nobody has been able to make it stick. And no one has been kind of satisfied or happy with what kind of group has gone up the road. Gateway Harley-Davidson again on the front taking turns. It's George Simpson. Starts off as one rider, then two, then three. Just kind of gradually gets bigger and bigger. Simpson continues to ride on the front. When you have one of these sort of second level teams, nobody's really thinking they're going to be able to get away. Sometimes those are exactly the riders who can set up the breakaway and stay away. Though that's not what happened here, but once again, they're the Well, now he's looking over his shoulder trying to see what's going to happen. He's a strong rider, Simpson. Collegiate time trial national champion. Well, the combination of different riders attacking continues to take place. I mean, we've seen uh, Gomez, we've seen Simpson, we've seen Daniel Eaton and Hegeveri, and as Hegeveri's going again right now, trying to bridge up to our one lone rider, Gateway Harley-Davidson, sharing that workload, keeping the pressure on. So now we are at the mid-race point. Five laps in, there's a point sprint, USA Crit point sprint. Halfway, mid-race is a USA Crit point sprint, and five laps to go, a USA Crit point sprint. So we're at the mid-race. 
Five places deep, 10, seven, five, three, and two. One rider off the front. Not wanting to litter, running out onto the course, be able to clean things up as Hegeveri is in full chase mode. Five points. Brett Wachtendorf. And you know what, he's going pretty good because you know, Hegeveri is not shutting him down. Hegeveri was in full chase mode and not able to bring him back. So a lot of credit to Wachtendorf being able to hold everybody off. Twenty-four years old right now, on the front, racing for Gateway Harley Davidson. Came off doing all of the amateur nationals, Criterium National, Road Race, Time Trial Nationals, went to all of them. Wachtendorf's going to pick up, or he already picked up, excuse me, because he won that mid-race point sprint, so that's five points in his lap. We could see a change in the lap leader, too. Let me see about the men. Uh, might have, he'll have to do a good amount of laps, because our current lap leader, he's not here at this race, was Elliot Doyle at 21. Second place was Frank Trevesio, or Trevesio at 16 laps. So... He's not going to be away for 21 laps, but he's definitely, Wechtendorf is going to be able to pick up a few laps to get closer in that, which is something he can think about a little bit later on. Our best young rider is Felix Cuvette Bouvet from the Canadian team, and he's actually not here either. So right now we have... Finally, two riders in the front, and by finally, I mean that Hegeveri was actually able to bring back Wechtendorf. It took a while as Hegeveri now is on the front. Perhaps United Healthcare happy with this move. We're past the halfway point. And look at that gap. Well, I don't know if my cameras are going to be able to stay on there long enough, but that is probably 20 second gap right now that we're seeing right now between our leaders. And so Silent starting to organize and get onto the front of him. We've talked about Justin Williams being in that group. So that is gonna be someone that they are gonna be riding for. Well, if anything, they are picking up more money. Adrian Hegeveri, excuse me, one of the, pretty much a strong workman, consummate teammate doing the lead outs, helping out a lot of the other riders on his team to be able to take the victories. I mean, his main goal is that somebody from that blue jersey wearing 
United Healthcare crosses that finish line first, and that really is, does a fantastic job and puts a lot of time into making sure that that gets done. Dorothy's going to use this to feed his ostriches there in Fort Collins. It's our ostrich farmer coming across the line for 59. Gateway Harley Davidson kind of on the front trying to slow things down. Silence right now on the front, not wanting it to get too far away. Talked about Justin Williams from Silence Pro Cycling Team. Justin's 28 years old, has a ton of wins already this year, including coming off of Dairyland with Shorewood, did a great ride over there. He was a two-time winner uh, of uh, last year at the North Star Grand Prix, winning two stages. This year he won one stage, the Minneapolis Uptown Criterium, also won two stages at Oklahoma City. Dana Point is the winner. So big races with big sprints, they like working for Justin Williams. And usually he delivers and he comes through. That's him way in the back right now. Second from the back, third from the back. He's got a teammate back there to help him move up a little bit later on, but right now he's sitting way in the back. Also sitting in the back, I think that was Gomez in the orange jersey with Gateway Harley Davidson. So he's looking uh, kind of uh, comfortable. Well, that was the end of that as uh, Wechtendorf is brought back. Brett Wechtendorf now sitting, relaxing, going to the back of the group, going to try to recover and perhaps possibly uh, participate in this race a little bit later on. We talked about different teammates. Micah Engel now on the front trying to attack. You're listening right now to our fourth race in the USA Crit Series, which is uh, our AWSB Boise Twilight Criterium, downtown Boise, Idaho. I'm Frankie Andreu as we are getting into the final moments of our USA Crit Race Series. The lead is up for grabs as our current race leader is Ty Magner. Second place is Ben Rinkema. This is why Ben Rinkema has been quiet in this race so far. Waiting and sitting in to see if he can show off that sprint. Try to pick up 200 points at the end. And now I'm looking right now. If he picks up 200 points, he can take over the lead and pull on that JL Velo Orange leader's jersey, which is gonna be something he's gonna be thinking about. I believe our Bike Reg Best Young Rider, I'm not sure if that's gonna change uh, as Felix Cuvette Bouvet, the Canadian rider, has that, but our Cycling News lap leader is also taken by, by a Canadian rider, Elliot Doyle, with 21 laps. He got that in, in the first race of our USA Crit Races in Athens Twilight, Georgia, Athens Orthopedic Clinic Twilight Race. Long breakaway, that's what established that to be able to take that lead with 21 laps. We've had a lot of different riders leading at, at, on this race at different points. As we see, it looks like it might be, I think that's Brad Huff on the front right now as we see Team Cliff Bar going through. That's Zach Allison. And that was Brad Huff who pulled off onto the side. Let's see if we keep this shot. Oh, no, we don't. Looking for Justin Williams sitting in the back in there. Another one we're gonna have to look out for, though, I mean, we're talking about silence a lot of time, but we can't uh, take anything away from Carlos Alzate or Luke Keo. I haven't even seen Luke Keo in this race. That, I think that's him right there, though, actually. Right in the middle of the group, Luke Keo is sitting in. One of the taxis of United Healthcare is with the other guys. They attack, they respond to the moves, and if a move goes up the road, they have someone there. But Luke Keo, one of those riders, is responsible for doing absolutely nothing. You stay as fresh and as rested as possible to use all of your energy for that last final 200 meters. And really to go up against some of those fast guys that are in this race, that's exactly what you need to do. You really have to be able to have a ton of snap and a ton of speed to be able to win at the end of the race, if it's all together. And that's the game, that's the poker game, that's the gamble. Will it be all together or will this group right here gonna go away or was the group like five laps ago gonna go away. That's what everybody keeps trying to figure out and if you don't have that many teammates to be able to cover everything, 
you're going to have to be able to do a lot of work or really gamble and sit back and wait to the end. Like right now, Rally with only three riders in this race definitely are sitting back, waiting a little bit. We've seen United Healthcare bridging gaps repeatedly, but they have enough riders that they can use up the horsepower, use those matches up to make sure and ensure that they have somebody in that front group. Look at this gap, though, that has opened up immediately. This is a large, large gap, probably more dangerous than what we've seen. That's Henderson that has managed to get up, getting onto the wheel of another rider from Gateway Harley-Davidson who's been putting in a strong ride. That's Dennis Ramirez. Looks like that familiar style of Carl Menzies, I believe, will be the rider in third with the green and black helmet. Muller v. in fourth. Thought they were ringing the bell saying, I don't know if, I, I'm not sure if I heard $100 or $200 as Henderson now on the front. On the back from Hedrick Racing. Pierre Bernard to full. Oh, I see somebody from uh, Palmetto Racing. I want to see who that is. That's Johnny Mitchell from Palmetto State Medical. Well, we're going to see how this sprint plays out right now. We're going to see if uh, Lance hate it can take that sprint. Oh, Lance didn't even go for it. The team Cliff Bar deciding to go for it. One rider in the saddle sprinting, one rider out of the saddle sprinting, and the out of the saddle rider takes it right at the line. I think it's going to be a counterattack, though. These guys aren't waiting around. Nice counterattack right now being set up. Kevin Mullervy is joined with Tifo. Tifo from Hedrick Racing. He's out of Redmond, Washington. Counterattack and preems and more money as it continues. I missed, uh, there's Tifo getting dropped right now. So on the front, Kevin Mullervy. Former winner of the Athens Twilight Criterium. He got into a break with three riders, one of them being Elzate, I think it was Elzate actually, from United Healthcare. Mullervy attacked near the end. Two other riders kind of looking at each other, looking at each other. And Mullervy just kept going, put his head down, stayed away and won the Athens Twilight Criterium. Trying to do the exact same thing right now, but instead of two riders looking at each other, he has a group of about 63 riders all looking at each other, trying to decide who's going to attack. Eight seconds right now, and in his second, the 26-year-old in the blue and white jersey about to get caught. That is Tifo. Gaps opening up, it's getting strung out, it's starting to 
definitely be more difficult and quicker for many of the riders that are in this race. 65 riders started now in the front. They're all coasting. It has been one attack after another, and Brad Huff senses a weakness. Guys are starting to slow down. Guys are starting to fatigue, and so Huff in the saddle, accelerating, trying to get up to Mullerby. So Mullerby right now, 10 seconds. Fantastic ride by Kevin Mullerby right now, trying to hold everybody off. See a lot of riders sitting on in the back. Silent, still all uh, very comfortable in the back as they're waiting to get into laps and start counting things down. Well, if we go back with Connor Mullerby, he's got his twin brother in the race also, but he's 29 years old. Went and raced at Tulsa Tough, didn't have much luck there. Had already has like two or he already has three wins in 2017. So he has some decent form that he's trying to be able to put together here for some better form. But a smart rider. Muller V has and he knows the tactics and the strategy. He's just trying to ride consistently right now, trying to see who might come up to him. Be able to give him a little bit of help to be able to get through the final laps of this race. He knows he can't stay away the whole time. That's why he's looking over his shoulder, waiting to see who's gonna be the rider that can come up to him. Look like a combination of riders. United Healthcare being matched up along with uh, Tim Savra from Project Echelon. So Savra now digging deep, has to get onto the blue United Healthcare. That is a free ride for him if he can get there. So it's Daniel Eaton. The rider from United Healthcare right now, Asavra has managed to latch on, but look at the chase. I believe that's Silence right now leading the pack. If that's not Silence, that might be Carling in that black jersey right now. Muller be grimacing a little bit, not looking very comfortable right now as Eaton plows straight up to him. Ah, oh, that was for a sprint right there. Sovereign taking it. Tim Sovereign looking over to their shoulders, putting money into his pockets, trying to sense who's going to go. As I mentioned, Mullervy very exhausted, dead. Nothing in the legs as Mullervy goes back to the group. Eaton looking comfortable. Sovereign looking very good also as these two riders. I'm not sure if they're going to work very well together. Time gap's holding at about 10 seconds. Well, now we have Savory, Eaton. $50 Prem. Hunter Grove on the front from Silence, starting to control things, not letting anything get too far away. This group will be coming back relatively quick as a big effort from Paul Morris. Sometimes that's discouraging. You do that huge effort, you bridge up to the group, and then you turn around and you see the field like chasing right behind you. It's like you just did a huge effort for nothing, but they still have a decent gap where it has not been brought back. More riders from Silence. That's the riders in the green and black helmet coming up. So now we're gonna have three riders on the front from Silence. Pace is starting to pick up the bunch. Everybody's starting to fight for position a little bit more by trying to move up. $50, that's going on for $100 cash. 
Ringing the bell for $100 cash right now for the Prem. Last year, Team Cliff Bar very aggressive in the race, continuing to attack and attack, and it's the exact same agenda they have here. So Paul Morris has been brought back. He's the one who just attacked $100 on the line right now. Team Cliff Bar trying to go for it. Gage Hecht, number 15 from Avolo. He's already won a two or three of these. Look at the small gear that Gage Hecht uses, and... That's a bad angle for me to be able to tell who wins. Yeah, it was uh, Simpson. I don't know if he's giving a tap on the shoulder saying, hey, I got that, or saying, hey, you got that. But somebody put $100 into their pocket. But I can't tell from that angle. But Hecht, using us, got the leg speed. Almost like he's coming from a track background instead of like a cyclocross background. And every time they do a sprint, look at the gap that opens up. It's enormous. Morris in no man's land. He was off the front. Now he's in no man's land waiting for the pack to be able to see who's going to be able to start chasing. So it's Simpson and Hecht right now. That is a good man to be with. Simpson, collegiate time trial national champion and amateur time trial national champion. So if you want a guy that can go against the clock, a guy that can put his head down and go, Simpson is a good one to do it. And you love, along with Gage Hecht, under 23, second at his national championship, two very fit and strong guys. Simpson coming off two wins also at Mellon City and Quad City Classic recently. Look at these riders spread out across the road. A Little bit of a poker game. They're saying, hey, United Healthcare, you're going to have to chase. And United Healthcare is looking over and saying, hey, I think uh, Silence, I think you're going to have to chase. And the only people who we know are not going to chase is Gateway Harley Davidson and Avolo, because these two riders are in the front group right now. I'm going to guess 15 to 20 seconds and look at how they are spread out across the road. It's going to be some frustrated riders very soon because this poker game is playing out. They have not laid their cards out on the table to see who is going to chase. It looks like Silence, the first one to bite as they're trying to bring back United Healthcare. So instead of United Healthcare riding on the front and chasing, Tanner Putt, I believe this is, is attacking and going up the road. It's a little bit different strategy. Instead of keeping it steady, they are attacking right now. 17 laps to go, I'm getting word. 17 laps to go. Carl Menzies on the front. United Healthcare attacking instead of chasing. Silence chasing instead of attacking. A nice shot right there earlier that it was uh, Josh Carling going through. Well, 17 laps to go. That's, that's a, uh, plenty of time in order to be able to make a difference, to be able to bring any of the riders on the back, especially if you have, uh, you know, a lot of these riders all have six riders in the race. So you could put five riders on the team. If you have a combination of another team helping, Becomes even better as Brad Huff sitting in second place right there. Previous 2016, last year, Professional Criterium National Championship. His Criterium National Championships came 10 years apart, one in 2006 and then one in 2016. So now Huff riding on the front, setting a little bit of tempo. They have three riders in the race, and so Huff, a very fast rider, strong rider. I mean, he could take, he could ride on the front and be able to sprint, but. Got to be thinking about uh, Perrick Nall, the Canadian rider on rally, or Curtis White, uh, one of their other teammates.
Well, the expo area is still open. Twilight Fan Expo right on the middle part of the course. Right on Capitol Park where food vendors get beverages. A lot of merchandise vendors, a lot of uh, local artisans selling things inside uh, Capitol Park for part of the community event that kind of brings and draws all of these people out here for the bike race. And they're going crazy right now, cheering on Simpson and Heck. A little bit of a surprise winner, winning the criterium, the criterium at the Redland Cycling Classic. Really that uh, put him on the map. Got his name noticed, a lot of teams took notice as Gage Heck took that criterium win. And so right now, trying to be able to see if he can put Boise. It looked like I saw, uh, might have been Vince Gee. The mechanic for a Volo standing on the side of the road. It might have been at turn one. I'm going to have to double check, try to get another camera angle of that to see if that's Vince standing on the side. Can I ask you guys a favor to lean off the handrails? Can you lean off the handrail for me, please? Are we just live streaming the event? Well, Carl Menzies riding on the front chasing and then sitting on him, doing a good job. Lance Hayden not contributing, just kind of slowing things down, just kind of waiting as uh, Menzies puts his hand up. That is the signal saying, hey, I need some help up here. I need the rest of my team up here. We're getting down to, I believe, I'm guessing right here, about 15 laps to go. A couple of his teammates sitting in the back. Maybe they didn't see the hand wave. Uh, maybe they're ignoring it. Maybe it's like pulling the earpiece out of your ear where you're not hearing your director. They have the numbers. Don't want to be in the team car after this race if those riders in the orange and black helmets don't get up to the front. Still have riders off the front. A pretty large gap right now. As you can see, almost, almost out of sight, out of mind is what's taking place right now as they're coming around, I believe, with about 14 laps to go. So one rider decided to attack and uh, going up the road was uh, Zamora, Mario Zamora. So Hecton Simpson still away. Tanner Putt from United Healthcare tried bridging up to that group, but he couldn't make it. Didn't make it all the way. Zamora just taking a preem. They're about 20 seconds back right now. Starting to get in formation. Silence. United Healthcare, the riders in blue are United Healthcare, the riders in front are Silence Pro Cycling Team. Team Cliff Bar looks like in the red jerseys coming up on the red side, or excuse me, on the right hand side. Hunter Grove right now leading the chase of the riders. Ideally, you want to be able to use one rider as long as possible. If he can go hard and keep the pace high, then you're going to be able to keep uh, that rider up there, be able to save all the rest of uh, your riders to be able to do the lead out a little bit later on. Twelve laps to go as Hunter Grove leads the entire group through. Collegiate time trial champion, amateur time trial champion, Simpson on the front from Gateway Harley-Davidson in combination with Gage Hecht from Avolo Cycling.
Team Cliff Bar now on the front. Becomes difficult with only two riders. Gonna need a little bit more than that to be able to bring back those front guys. As I talked about, very strong riders in the front right now. They have the numbers that they can get organized with Team Cliff Bar with John Bergman, Paul Morris, Zach Allison, Michael Jacques, Connor Mullervy, and Kevin Mullervy. Coming down to 11 laps to go, time gap holding steady at 20 seconds. As you can see, the first riders go through turn number one. That was a little bit of a blur coming across the screen. United Healthcare now on the front. And again, I talked about one team maybe not being able to do it, a combination of two different teams possibly could make the difference with United Healthcare combining with Silence Pro Cycling. Adrian Hegeveri on the front right now. Talked about how he is a consummate team player, always doing the work that is needed in order to be able to give his team the best chance for a win. And with Alzate and Luke Keel, that is two very fast riders. They're going to be getting up near that finish line as quick as they can by the end of this race. 65 riders started our fourth race of the USA Crit Series. I'm Frankie Andreu as we're bringing you the 31st annual ASWB Twilight Criterium. Big thanks to the title sponsor, the law offices of Anderson, Schwartzman, Woodard, and Brailsford. Along we have to thank the merchants and members of the Downtown Boise Association and Georgia Cycle and Fitness. Broadcasting the race live to you. Oh, a crash, a massive crash as we're watching this. This is where things get complicated. Looks like, I think that was Luke Keel that's down. That's number one in the blue. That's Luke Keel down. And, oh, it looks like 28. I think that's uh, Corey Davis. But Keel definitely down hard. Another rider down in the middle of the road. A lot of guys situating themselves. We are still, there's still time for free laps. So that's something to keep in mind that there are still times for free laps. Looks like a, a rider from a Guten Plan, Sea Sucker Coaching. There's Vince Key from Avolo Cycling. Look, running over there to see if anybody's in there. White is in there. Look like it, White from Rally Cycling involved in that crash. Gateway Harley Davidson with three guys. Right now we're getting the riders to come around. There's our two, two leaders. That was Simpson and Hecht who just went through and it was at about 20 seconds. Hopefully this rider is able to get up. Looks like he's moving his arm. Hopefully the, uh, the collarbones are gonna be feeling okay. Time gap went from 20 seconds down to 11 seconds. That fight for position, trying to move up to the front, trying to stay in position, taking its toll with that crash in between turn three and turn number four. So for United Healthcare, now they have to figure out what they want to do. Luke Keo, not sure of how injured he is, not sure if he's back into the race. If he took a free lap, they still have Carlos Alzate, but that is a big loss either in the lead out or as your sprinter for United Healthcare to lose Luke Keo. Gateway Harley Davidson. I mean, there were three guys that were in that pit. And so Gateway Harley Davidson is going to have to, uh, one, two, three, four, they have six riders in the race. And so hopefully those guys are able to get a free lap and be able to get back in. It looks like everybody was able to be able to clear off the road. A big thank you to the emergency personnel that is. They're taking care of things. Time gap now is seven seconds, so the gap is coming down. This is always interesting, throwing in the pit. Right into the back of the group and having to chase on. I bet you some of those guys are definitely gonna have to chase on in the back of the, of the main peloton. Hopefully they all got back on as we are into under 10 laps to go. Team Cliff Bar on the right-hand side. Silence right there, United Healthcare. Gonna look at a little bit further in the back. Yeah, look, they throw them in off the back, so now they have to chase to be able to get on. This is why I say free laps are not a problem. Anybody who wants to take a free lap, I'm all for it. You can take a free lap anytime you want. This is just my opinion, because you get thrown into the back of the group. It's harder to move back up, and generally, if you wanna go in and take a free lap, you're already kind of like decimated or not feeling good. 
So it's going to be a hard time moving back up to the front. Plus, you kind of get out into uh, get out of your rhythm that you're used to. Bell lap. That means we're coming at to six laps to go. Next lap is five laps to go. We're coming into our five laps to go USA crit points. This right now should be between Simpson and Heck. Time gap is only five or six seconds, but it is coming down very quickly as the riders coming around turn number two. Your collegiate time trial national champion on the front with his head down. Your amateur time trial national champion. It's the same guy. It is Simpson from Gateway Harley Davidson on the front. Heck, they have been away. You know what? Those lap leader points definitely going to start adding up for Simpson, depending on if he's been crossing that line. Right now, time gaps down to four seconds as Elliot Doyle was our lap leader at 21. He may still remain our lap leader by the end of the race, but right now, silence on the front. I told you, it's going to get darker. Dusk setting in, the lights coming out, the shadows starting to play a little bit of havoc on the right-hand side. We can see our race leaders coming down probably within three seconds. You might as well say that these, this group is caught. So now, what kind of recovery does Simpson and Hecht have? I mean, I've seen Hecht attacking the entire time. The rider from Avolo Racing, the brand new development team, Avolo Cycling, now caught. He's going a little bit further back. Hecht might be done for the day. Going to see what kind of recovery he have. Rally Cycling starting to get together right there. In the orange jerseys. So Luke Keogh back in the group after taking the free lap. So he's going to be dangerous along with Carlos Salzado. You know what I haven't noticed is where's Justin Williams? These are, unless these guys are all the chasers. There's Justin Williams sitting a little bit further back, taking a little bit more draft. The rider in the green and black sitting probably at about 10th position. Now I believe this was a sprint for... USA crit point, so that's five, seven, three, and two taken by the front rider of silence. Uh, $100 coming through, excuse me. So five laps to go, it was Hecht who took it, followed by Simpson, Rinkema, Hunter Grove, and Brian Lewis. So Ben Rinkema picking up some more points, trying to get closer towards taking that JL Velo orange leader's jersey as our race overall leader by the end of the day for the USA crit series. It depends on how he's gonna do. 200 points awarded at the finish. He's only about 100 points out of the lead, and as a reminder, Ty Magner, our race leader, is not here in the USA Crit Series. Going to try to listen to the announcers a little bit. I think this is going to be three laps to go as silence is going to start picking things up. But man, it is going to get sketchy waiting for when that blue train is going to try to come over the top of them. It will become a drag race. A couple Gateway Harley-Davidson riders who were involved in the crash thrown in off the pit, but now not really a part of the race, just trying to stay out of the way. So Silence taking $100 on that premium. They're not thinking about that right now. Five riders going through. Justin Williams still is sitting further back. He's almost... He's sitting on the rally riders. That it right there. Perfect shot of Justin Williams going through right there in the green and black. Sitting on the rally riders who are sitting on United Healthcare. Not following his train. Not riding up in the front there. As United Healthcare at some point is going to swarm around silence. And perhaps that's what they're expecting. Expecting United Healthcare to come across the top. Two laps to go. Daniel Eaton's in second. Hegeveri is in first. Riders are going to see two laps to go right now as the lead outs now are starting. They can keep speeds of 35 miles an hour easily for this last two laps. That final sprint will be up near 40 to 45 miles an hour as they are setting up their sprinters. Brian Lewis from Silence coming through. Daniel Eden in second. Hegeveri is still there. Hegeveri now out of the saddle attacking. Looks like Tanner Putt in third. Well, a big move by Silence. Very interesting that he didn't react to that situation. Carlos Alzate not going with that, that move, deciding to stay on his team, trusting his team. Look at the gaps that have opened up. If you're not in the top five right now, you're not getting up to the top five. 
Huff is still there. in the orange jersey sitting on now Justin Williams, who's number 16, who has just come through. The sprinters of the sprinters are putting on the boxing gloves right now. It's one lap to go. A gap has opened up as Tanner Putt can't hold the wheel. The speed is holding too high. Daniel Eaton flying around the corner and right on his wheel, Greg Henderson. The unexpected right now is the sprinters now being left behind. Unbelievable. Daniel Eaton by himself with his head down. Warp speed with one lap to go as Henderson is set up. Everybody is set up except for Eaton. Eaton with his head down. Can he hold him off? Eaton trying to hold off a charging pack with some of the fastest sprinters in the world, but United Healthcare is still on the front. Eaton trying to win here. The Boise Twilight Criterium coming down. The last 200 meters, he took a flyer with one lap to go. Now here comes Justin Williams. All the way to the line, Eaton is passed and it's Justin Williams at the line, finishing just in front, I believe, of Luke Keough, timing it perfectly. Unbelievable, Justin Williams, I told you, sitting in, not doing an ounce of work. Williams finishing with Scott Law, his lead out in second. So Silence taking first and second, Luke Keough in third, Brian Gomez in fourth, Daniel Eaton finishing fifth with the heroic move, Brad Huff in sixth, Joshua Carling in seventh, and Carlos Alzate in eighth. But unbelievable. I did not think they were gonna catch Daniel Eaton in that last part. I thought he had it, but it just goes to show you, 45 miles an hour, time gaps come down quicker than a blink, and that's exactly what Justin Williams had planned on as he takes the win at the 31st annual ASWB Boise Twilight Criterium, congratulations. A lot of riders cruising around now, just kind of cooling off. Mario Zamora, a lot of riders, now excuse me, the spectators still all around the outside and the inside of the course, cheering all the riders on and high fives all around as there's our winner, Justin Williams, coming through. Coming off a big win at BC Super Week. The whole debacle with the disc brakes and racing in Canada and you can't use disc brakes. Borrowed one of his uh, teammates on the women's team actually. Joelle Newmanville borrowed her bike. Rode it to the win at BC Super Week and now taking the win here in Boise. Downtown Boise right here at the steps on the Capitol building. Fantastic race here. Big thank you to the law offices of Anderson, Schwartzman, Woodard and Brailsford of being able to bring this great race. The 12th race on the USA Cycling's Pro Road Tour and the fourth race of the USA Christmas. Oh, you know what I'm curious about, which I need to find out, is where did Ben Rinkema finish up? Because Ben Rinkema is looking, trying to get points, and Ben Rinkema 11th. So if we go down 10 points, that's what, maybe 100 points for him? 80, 70, 60. So it might be 100 to 110 points for Ben Rinkema. Well, he's going to pick up 50 points for starting, so that means he only had about 50 points to make up. So Ben Rinkema will be our new USA Crits overall leader, pulling on the orange jersey from JL Velo a little bit later on. See some riders talking a little bit. Hopefully that's just talking or a civil discussion, not a lecture. We can see White riding down, cool down all around. A lot of riders giving high fives and the, the crowd having a great time. On the inside part of the course, drinking, <clears throat> drinking, hanging out. Race is over. Now it's time to celebrate. We talked about all of the stuff. Now, you know, you can celebrate tonight. We talked about the different brew pubs and the wineries that are around the area, but also a big part of these riders hang around for another day or two the whitewater rafting, the mountain bike trails, a lot of different activities to do in downtown Boise. So Ben Rincoma now taking the lead by 101 points. 
to be able to pull on the orange USA Crits leaders jersey. And from Palmetto State, his teammate Corey Davis moving up into third overall. So very good outing for those riders tonight being able to move up. Well worth the team from Palmetto State Medical Elite Cycling Team being able to take over first and third overall in our USA Crits series. So in a little bit, we're going to have our podium coming up. Stay tuned for our podium. And again, that donate button sitting on the website definitely helps to be able to bring the production to you, to be able to bring all of or more criteriums throughout the U.S. to be able to bring live web streaming. And so please feel free to donate and contribute. Of course, it goes a long ways in being able to bring all the bike races over the Internet so everybody will be able to watch. Uh, women's podium, I believe, coming up. Our men's podium coming up in a little bit. Daniel Eaton now, with the points that he gets, takes over our best young riders jersey. So that will be presented a little bit later on. Our Bike Reg best young riders jersey. As you can see, uh, a lot of the riders uh, relaxing in downtown Boise as we're waiting for our podium as they're figuring out final results for our women's race and our men's race. Waiting right now to find Justin Williams to see if they can talk to him. He's probably having a beer or two. Scott Law, though, that's a first and second for Silent. So that is a big victory for them. Luke Keough, third last year, taking in another third now that I think about it. So that's last year, let out Ty Magner and finished third on the day, and that's exactly where he finished up this year. So that's two thirds and for for Luke Keo Well, we talked about Boise State University, the home of the Broncos, just down the road, but... Now we have him, Justin Williams. That's not Justin Williams, though. That is... Uh, right here, my friend. Second place to your teammate tonight. One, two for the guys in green. How did you do that? Um, to be honest, I don't really know. <laughs> we, um, the boys were, did an incredible job. From the gun, we just tried to cover as many moves as we could, especially if it had a United Healthcare rider in it. Um, we just tried to uh, keep our wits about us, and uh, towards the end there, we all got together and did a really good chase, and we got a little muddled up towards the end there. Our, uh, our uh, dad of the group, uh, Carl, he uh, ended up in a barrier and uh, probably in someone's dinner, but um, he got back up and... Uh, did an awesome job in putting, in putting myself and Justin in the right spot and uh, coming into that finish line, me and Justin just went for it full gas and, and, and it just came out perfect. Now where were you coming out of the last turn? Were you in first, second, third, fourth? Uh, I think I was about fourth, just on the inside, um, Alzate and, uh, and uh, oh, God, it skipped my mind, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, the, like, the two United Healthcare boys jumped and uh, I just saw Justin on their wheel, and I'm like, ooh, this is going to be good. And uh, So was Justin in front of you coming on to the last turn? Yeah, yeah, a bit different from our usual tactic. Um, <laughs> so we just drag raced up the home straight, and um, I just ended up getting over the top, um, the second spot, and Justin got to throw his hands in the air, and uh, so did I. So it, it was an incredible job by the team. It is amazing to see... Uh, see a one-two in any race because the competition is so tough 
United Healthcare has won this thing four times in a row. Nobody can get past their train, but tonight you guys infiltrated it. Yeah, I mean, it kind of helps when you've got inside knowledge with uh, Carl Menzies and Clark as your director. So um, we've, we've got all these plans and little tactics, and, and uh, Carl's, uh, Hilton's got a few aces up his sleeve when it comes to that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I just... Oh, for me, for me personally, this this isn't a this isn't a podium for me. This is this is the boys. This is their their hard work and sacrifice put me and Justin in the right spot to get the victory. So, it's it's their victory more than it is ours. Well, you know, a lap to go, or after the finish, you see guys coming in off the back, off the back, and I was I was explaining to everybody that these guys did the work of getting you guys up in the front. One of your teammates was well off the back. Um, I can't remember who it was. And so it is a huge bunch of teamwork that goes to this thing. You and Justin, obviously geniuses at getting yourself positioned in among the boys in blue, the guys in orange, the rally guys. Brad Huff was in there. And uh, just an amazing victory. We're going to talk to your teammate here. After he, It's his little moment of fame. And Scott Law, where are you from? I'm from Australia, uh, just a little town about an hour south of Sydney. Um, come all the way over here to the, uh, the United States last year and uh, had some good success and was lucky enough to get picked up by the Silence Pro Cycling team. So getting to live out my dream over here in the United States and loving every minute of it. All right, Justin Williams, come on over here. Justin Williams, it's, you know, I was going to, I was going to ask Scott, you know, were you leading out Justin and Justin came around you, but you guys were both positioned around third and fourth coming out of the last turn, and you guys just both had the opportunity to go for it. Yeah, you know, the team took care of the race for us all day, so all we had to do is really sprint. Um, usually we're a little bit more organized, but with a big team like United out here, we really had to just play the hand that we were dealt. And, um, yeah, well, I was just really patient. I felt like I was really fast on this course, and I didn't have to do anything all day, so... Going into one, I was maybe eight guys back, which is typically too far, but I just trusted the guy. Scott was in front of me, and Carl waited for us on the back straight. So uh, I just believed in the team. I just had faith and then did what I do best in the last 100 meters. Well, you know, several laps to go. A lot of your guys are up there chasing the breakdown. And I, and I noticed you weren't there. And so I had to explain to people that, you know, you're the sprinter. You're not going to be up there doing the work. And then John, with uh, one to go, he's got the photo finish going. He says he's back about halfway, sitting on Luke Keogh's wheel. A lap later, you're up at the front, and Luke Keogh gets involved in a little game of dominoes right there with, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 guys going down. And uh, you kept yourself safe and very well contained. Your team was together, and you guys pulled it off. Yeah, at the end of the day, we all have our jobs, and, um, and my job is to sit back. Uh, the course is fast, and... I'm good around the corner, so, you know, I just trusted in the guys again. I know where I need to be when it's time to do my job, and the guys did a great job of doing their job tonight. It makes it easy on me. Well, like Mr. Law said, everybody did their job tonight, and it paid off big time, breaking a four-race winning streak of United Healthcare. They did well as well, but uh, right now we're going to get the top three for the stage, and who is third place? Kurt? Or somebody get me third place here. I know we had a lot of guys. Luke was up there. Oh, we're doing a... Well, that was a nice interview with Scott Law and Justin Williams. And you know what? When you have the speed of a cheetah, it makes it easy to be able to correct mistakes that might happen and I noticed that Justin Williams was farther back in that group than I thought he should be but uh, again Carl Menzies managed to be able to drag him up to the front and be able to launch and Scott Law is no slouch I mean he won the overall of uh, Tulsa tough uh, winning stages there a very good fast sprinter out of Australia and you put that combination together and they proved to be uh, unmatched got to give a lot of credit though Luke Keogh with a bad crash with about 10 laps to go, uh, definitely went down hard, took a free lap, got back up, and still managed to place third. And you know when you crash like that, it, you, everything is not hunky-dory. You are not all set and in, in rhythm. And so he really had to, had to gut it out to be able to make sure that his team ended up with something. And so a, big, a, lot, a lot of props to, to Luke Keel for, 
for sticking with that. But Justin Williams came here with a, a determination to be able to take the victory here. And you can see uh, at the finish line, he was uh, flexing, he was pumped, he was definitely very pleased to be able to take the win here at the Boise Twilight Criterium. So one and two for Silence Pro Cycling as we're waiting to go to our uh, women's podium, which will be coming up in just a little bit. Our overall winner, I believe, remains the same with Peter Mullins. As let's head over to do our, uh, our women's podium, our top three and our- Young uh, rider placed in USA Crit Series so far. Erica, where are you? All right, Erica not here. The Cycling News lap leader, still Tiffany Pizzullo. Tiffany, still our lap leader. There we go. And Gene Dixon. A key figure, if not the creator, of USA Crits and Speed Week and a lot of incredible criterium racing across the country. Presenting that Cycling News lap leader jersey to Tiffany, Tiffany Pizzullo. And, of course, Tiffany took the overall as soon as she came to the start line. The J.L. Velo jersey for the overall leader in the USA Crits series for women is Tiffany Pizzullo. Going to get warm under all that stuff. Full results for the men's pro race are posted. Full results for the men's pro race are posted. Tiffany Pizzullo. Oh, sorry, Tiffany Pizzullo of L.A. Sweat, our overall leader in USA Crits. And now for the... Uh, Results of the women's ASWB Boise Twilight Criterium earlier this evening. Please welcome, taking her spot on the third place podium, Starla Tettergreen of Hagen Berman Superman. In second place, coming on up there again for LA Sweat, Tiffany Pizzullo. And our winner tonight in a time of 57 minutes and 52 seconds, a show air 2020 ride biker, Jennifer Valente. Getting the stage winner's jersey. And the winner's check. To Jennifer. Ah, there we go. And the winner's check to Jennifer Valenti, $4,000, the ASWB Twilight Criterium. Presented by Micron. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, another big rousing or ovation for our women's riders tonight. Our women's uh, series leader, Tiffany, Tiffany Pizzullo, and our women's race winner, Jennifer Valente. Can I have an L.A. Sweat representative to the announcer's podium? L.A. Sweat, can I have somebody to the announcer's podium, please? Results are posted at the registration van for the pro men field. Pro men, you may pick up your preems at the announcer's podium. There are a couple of pro women's preems remaining to be picked up. You may pick up pro women's prize list at the registration table as well.
first and second, respectively, in the men's pro race. And Lou Keo, number one for United Healthcare, was third. We will be getting these riders up here momentarily. We also, of course, will be getting the men's awardees for USA Crit Series up here momentarily. Gene Dixon will bring you those results in a moment. Right now, again, I would like to thank ASWB Anderson Schwartzman Woodard Brailsford Law Firm of Boise for their actually completely valuable, indispensable partnership in the Boise Twilight Criterium. And of course, Mike Cooley has been directing this race, I think I am told, for all of its 31 years. And Mike Cooley, Tom Platt, the owners of George's Cycles. All right, first, the best young rider for USA Crits. Please welcome Daniel Eaton, best young rider. We're going to find out how old Daniel is. And I believe uh, Daniel riding for UHC. Daniel Eaton to the awards podium, please. Best young rider so far in the USA Crits series. Daniel, how old are you? 24. Oh, 24, and that's still, that's still pretty young. You know, we've got guys in their 30s and even 40s racing at the pro level. We've found out over the last 30 or 40 years through the fitness revolution that, uh, you know, 30 is not old, 40 is not old, 24 is young. Dan Eaton. Let's see if we can find out what his overall placing is. Dan Eaton. All right, I don't know Dan Eaton's overall placing, but I know the overall placing of this guy, the overall leader of the USA Crit Series, Ben Rankins. Ben Renkema, and he is also U.S. Amateur National Criterium Champion. And now for the top three in this 2017 ASWB Boise Downtown Twilight Criterium. And a huge battle tonight representing United Healthcare Pro Cycling. Please welcome in third place rider number one, Luke Keo. Oh, white timeout. All right, we're going to wait on this. We're going to wait. Hang on a second. I'm going to head back up here for a moment. All right. Over and finalize those results. We would like to thank once again Anderson Schwartzman, Woodard, and Brailsford. Lots of noise. Anderson Schwartzman, Woodard, and Brailsford. Okay, well, we tried. Commercial litigation firm representing defendants and plaintiffs with attorneys specializing in a large number of areas, aswblaw.com. Also, Micron Foundation, enriching the communities where its team members live and work, and that's right here in downtown Boise. Through grants, partnerships, and volunteerism, Micron makes a difference for total for local nonprofits and schools. The Micron Foundation. Twilight Criterium is a terrific family event in the heart of downtown Boise. 
Our presenting partner, Bronco Motors, a family of dealerships, voted the best place to buy a car and the best auto repair in the Treasure Valley. For the past 47 years, Bronco Motors, proud to serve you, bringing Hyundai and Nissan, Nissan Commercial, Mitsubishi, and Idaho's first and only Infinity dealer. I remember at Bronco Motors, we've got it all. America's best warranty, America's most fuel-efficient car, and so much more. One great company, six great brands. Come see us in downtown Boise on Fairview Auto Row at the Idaho Center Auto Mall and online anytime at broncomotors.com. Hey, if I could get a Visit, da a Visit Dallas DNA Pro Cycling representative to the stand. Visit Dallas DNA Pro Cycling. If I can get one of you folks to the stand, would appreciate it. Visit Dallas. All right, and while we wait for final top three results of the men's pro race, we'd also like to thank George's Cycles and Fitness. Run by cyclists for cyclists. Georgia celebrates 45 years of great business in Boise. Proud to be a longtime partner of the Twilight Criterium. The Downtown Boise Association, the merchants and businesses of Downtown Boise want you to be proud to be unique. Shop and dine a local and be something special. Be in Downtown Boise. And of course, our St. Luke's Sports Medicine team Dr. Alex, Dr. Nilsson, Forrest, and the team at St. Luke's Sports Medicine. Learn more at stlukesonline.org. And our new gold medal sponsor, Delta Airlines, with an industry-leading global network, Delta Airlines and the Delta Connection carriers offer service to 335 destinations in 62 countries on six continents, including Delta Airlines nonstop service from Boise to LA year-round, and non-stop service from Boise to Seattle four times daily. Ladies and gentlemen, All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to present the top three in the men's pro edition of the 2017 ASWB Boise Twilight Criterium. In third place, riding for United Healthcare Cycling, please welcome Daniel Eaton. Daniel Eaton, third place on the podium. In a second place for Silence Pro Cycling, Scott Law. And the man who blew them all away tonight to take first place. Also for Silence Pro Cycling, Justin Williams. Daniel Eaton of United Healthcare Pro Cycling, Scott Law of Silence Pro Cycling, and Justin Williams of Silence. And the stage winner's jersey going to Justin Williams, breaking that four year winning streak by United Healthcare.
Your winner, Justin Williams. Followed by Scott Law and Eaton Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for participating in the 2017 ASWB Boise Twilight Criterium. The winner's check going to Justin Williams of Silence. Thank you to ASWB for making this all possible along with Micron, Georgia's Delta Airlines. Tracy, Convention and Visitors Bureau. And Washington Federal, it's your goal, it's our job to help you achieve it. So thank you everybody, thank you Boise, Idaho for another great year and another great day of bike racing right here in down. Well, another fantastic race here at the Boise Twilight Criterium. And congratulations to Jennifer Valenti and Justin Williams. I'm Frank Andrian for the USA Crit Series and the Boise Twilight Criterium. I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. And please make sure to be able to tune in for the Benchmark Twilight Cycling Classic on August 12th. To everybody, have a great night.